This video demonstrates how to establish a Bluetooth low energy connection using the components in the DKBLE112 development kit, as well as how to load new firmware into the onboard module to test new functionality. We'll start by testing the factory default firmware, then reflash a heart rate demo project from the SDK, and finish up by putting the factory default project back on for good measure. To begin, first we'll unpack the dev kit from the box. The complete kit includes a printed quick start guide, the main evaluation board, a BLE D112 dongle and two bare BLE112 modules, two micro USB cables, a CR2032 coin cell battery, an external flash module, and a 2x5 pin ribbon cable for flashing external devices with the onboard debugger. For this demonstration, we will need the main evaluation board, one of the micro USB cables, and the BLED 112. If you're following along, now would be the best time to download and install the latest BlueGiga BLE software development kit to ensure that you have all necessary software and drivers for running this test. To get the latest SDK, go to www.bluegiga.com. To accomplish the first part of the demo, all you need to do is plug the micro USB cable into your host PC and into the debugger connector on the evaluation board and ensure that the power switch is set to USB. You should see DKBLE112 and a temperature readout appear on the LCD indicating that the module has booted and the on module application is running. The factory default demo firmware on this kit is the DKBLE112 project which can be found in the example subfolder from the SDK. If you don't see the message showing on the LCD, make sure that the display peripheral switch on the left side of the board is in the on position and that the green power LED is illuminated. Also, the USB current header will need to have a shorting jumper across it in order to properly provide power. If the message still does not appear, press the reset display button and then the Reset BLE112 button. If you still do not see a message shown on the display, then the module may not be running the factory default firmware, and you may need to reflash it, which we'll get to a bit later. After verifying that you see the message on the LCD, we'll establish a Bluetooth low energy connection using the BLE D112 dongle as the master or central device and the BLE112 module on the evaluation board as the slave or peripheral device. To do this, insert the BLED112 dongle into your host PC, then start the BLE GUI application which comes with the SDK. The correct drivers and the BLE GUI application will already be present on your system if you have installed the latest SDK. If you started BLE GUI before inserting the dongle, make sure you click the refresh button in BLE GUI once first after starting the application. Then locate and select the Blue Giga Bluetooth Low Energy device in the dropdown where all available COM ports are listed. Once you have done this, click the attach button to open the dongle's COM port. You should now see a bright green connected indicator in the upper right corner. If you do not see this even after clicking the attach button, Ensure that you do not have that COM port open in any other applications, and if necessary, remove and reinsert the dongle, then try attaching again. Next, click the Generic option under the Scan group towards the left side of the window, and make sure the Active Scanning checkbox is checked. Then click the Set Scan Parameters button. You should now see a BGAPI command and response transaction appear in the log area at the bottom of the window. If you see the command sent but no corresponding response, recheck to make sure you are attached properly to the dongle and that it shows connected in the upper right corner of the window. Now you're ready to scan for nearby BLE devices, including the module on the evaluation board which is powered on and advertising that it is present and connectable. Click the Start button to begin scanning. You should now see one or more devices appear in the main device list area on the right side of the BLE GUI window. 
one of these should show DKBLE112 thermometer for the device name. The RSSI or signal strength will fluctuate typically between about negative 40 and negative 70 depending on how far away the evaluation board is from the dongle. To establish the BLE connection, click the Connect button to the right of the device name in the list. If the connection succeeds, the button will change title to show Disconnect, and the status on the lower left of the device summary will show Connected with a handle of zero, assuming this is the first active connection. Now click the GAT button to expand the GAT Explorer. GAT, or the Generic Attribute Protocol, is the mechanism used for transferring data across a Bluetooth low energy connection. The GAT structure is typically defined on the slave or peripheral side and accessed from the master or central side after first performing a discovery. The GAT structure is organized into services and characteristics which are logically defined in groups known as profiles. GAT is used both for pulling data from the server to the client by reading and writing, as well as pushing data from the server to the client using methods called notify and indicate. The factory default demo firmware on the DKBLE112 implements one such profile, called the Health Thermometer Profile, and which is made up of the Health Thermometer Service and a single temperature measurement characteristic. This measurement uses the Indicate method to push periodic temperature updates from the GAT server to the GAT client at a rate of once per second in this example. We'll now see this in action. Now that the GAT Explorer has been expanded, first click the Service Discover button to obtain a list of all services on the peripheral. One of the entries should have a UUID of 1809 and a description of Health Thermometer. Click on this entry to select it, then click the Descriptors Discover button to pull back information for all attributes within this service definition. One of the entries now shown in the list will have a UUID of 2A1C and a description of temperature measurement. This is the attribute used for transferring measurement data via the indicate operation. Note that the health thermometer profile defines this characteristic so that the client is not allowed to read the measurement on demand, but instead the server must push updates when they are available. To test this, click on the temperature measurement entry in the list, and then click the read button on the right. An error event will appear in the log showing that the attribute cannot be read. This is by design, according to the official profile specification from the Bluetooth SIG. To properly get data updates, we will need to subscribe to indications. This is done by writing a particular 2-byte value to a special attribute known as the Client Characteristic Configuration attribute. This has a UUID of 2902 and if present should be found in the attribute list right after the main data attribute it applies to. In this example, you will see this attribute just slightly lower in the attribute list. To subscribe to indications, click on the Client Characteristic Configuration attribute to select it, then enter 0200 in the text field immediately below the attribute list, and finally click the Write button to apply it. This 0200 value is actually a 16-bit little endian representation of the integer value 2, which is a bit mask telling the GAT server that we have enabled indications. You can write four zeros back to disable indications again. Once you have done this, you should now begin to see BG API events appearing once per second in the log area of the BLE GUI application and also see the value being updated in the GAT Explorer in the value column on this same one second interval. Note that the value may not change rapidly. You can hold your thumb on the module shield for a few seconds to try increasing the temperature. Note that the temperature measurement data is not shown in a human readable format. It is a specially crafted five byte block of data containing one flags byte and four more bytes which represent a floating point value in the IEEE 11073 specification. For more detail, see the Health Thermometer Profile specification document from the Bluetooth SIG. Now that we've demonstrated a working BLE connection with live periodic data transferred over the air, it's time to try reflashing new firmware with different functionality onto the module. 
To do this, we'll use the built-in debugger and the BLE update application that comes with the SDK to flash the heart rate demo project that is also found in the example folder from the SDK. Start the BLE software update tool and check to make sure that there is an entry shown in the port dropdown for the debugger. If the debugger connection is correct and the SDK has been installed, then the drivers should be present and the debugger port will appear properly in the list. To verify connectivity with the module on the evaluation board, click the Info button in the Updater tool to read current module data. If it works, you should see the module's hardware type, serial number, MAC address, and license key if present. Note that the license key should come pre-flashed at the factory and will be automatically retained during reflashes. However, if the key is missing, please contact Blue Giga Support for a replacement. Without a valid license key, the BLE radio on the module will remain inactive. If you cannot read the module's information correctly, ensure that the module is properly powered and that the debugger switch on the evaluation board is set to the module position. Also, make sure that the debugger LED on the board is lit green and is not red, which indicates no communication. Once you have verified proper communication, click the Browse button and locate the SDK installation folder, typically inside c colon backslash blue giga, and then the example dkble112hr subfolder. Once you have done this, select the project ble112.bgproj definition file. Then simply click the Update button to instantly compile and reflash the heart rate project onto the module on the evaluation board. This process should take less than 5 seconds, and once complete you will see a green success message. If you do not see this message, ensure that you have selected the correct project definition file and not one of the other XML files. If the updater tool generates an error about selecting a BG Build tool manually, click the BG Build menu in the top left of the window, then select Manually and browse to the bin subfolder of the BLE SDK and then select the bgbuild.exe file. Once you have successfully flashed the heart rate example project onto the module, the new firmware will run immediately. You may notice that there is still a lingering message on the LCD on the evaluation board. This is normal since the heart rate project does not do anything with the display itself and the LCD will remain in its previous state. You can clear the display by pressing the Reset Display button on the evaluation board, though this is not strictly necessary and will not affect the functionality of the heart rate example. To test the heart rate project, switch back to the BLE GUI application and repeat the scan and connect steps from earlier in this demo. You can jump straight to the connection step if desired since the Bluetooth MAC address is unchanged and the updated module will be connectable but it is a good idea to rerun the scan as well to verify that the device name has changed to Blue Giga Heart Rate Demo as expected. Once you connect to the module again, make sure that the GAT Explorer is still expanded, then click the Clear button to clean out old GAT structure data. Click the Service Discover button again to list all services, and note the new Heart Rate service with a UUID of 180D. Click on that to select it, then click the Descriptors Discover button as before to list all attributes within that service. Like the health thermometer profile, the heart rate profile contains a single measurement characteristic which cannot be directly read. But unlike the temperature measurement characteristic, the heart rate measurement characteristic uses notifications instead of indications. These are the same in that they both push data from the server to the client, but different in that notifications are unacknowledged packets while indications are acknowledged. This means that notifications require less time and power overall, but they are inherently not as reliable as indications, since the server sending the notification has no way to know whether it was received. The process for subscribing to notifications is almost identical to that for indications, but instead of the value 2, we use the value 1, so to perform this step, select the Client Characteristic Configuration attribute with UUID 2902 directly below the Heart Rate Measurement Characteristic, then enter 0100 in the text field below the attribute list and click the Write button. 
Similar to the previous example, you should now see heart rate measurements appear once per second in the value column with corresponding events appearing in the BLE GUI log. This measurement is a little easier to read. It is made up of only two bytes, one flags byte and one beats per minute value, which ranges between 20 and 224. BLE GUI displays this data in hexadecimal notation, so the heart rate will be shown as between 14 and DC. The measurement is actually emulated using the on module ADC, which reads port 0 pin 6 each second and scales the result into the correct range. You can control the voltage on this pin along this range by setting the potentiometer peripheral switch on the evaluation board to the on position and then rotating the potentiometer in the top left corner of the board. Now that we've shown two demos and the reflash process, Hopefully you've obtained a good familiarity with the development kit and the associated software tools for reflashing and testing. You can return the dev kit to factory default behavior by repeating the BLE software update reflash step, but using the DKBLE112 example project instead of the heart rate example. If you reflash this project back onto the module, the LCD will once again show the periodic temperature readout. You can find additional example projects in the SDK and on our website if you would like to experiment with other functionality. For further details and demos, check out the links in the description as well as any of our other videos. Thanks for watching.